Hello everyone, this is Yuri and Akira desu. Today we will use what we prepared in our previous episode to make a beautiful flounder sashimi platter and sushi. For first recipe we will introduce you how to prepare wonderfully plated sashimi. Okay, so here we have flounder saku, a sashimi block we got from breaking down whole fish in the previous episode. First, let's slice off harabone. Enter knife diagonally, then slice off two sections here, in about 1cm thickness. Then, we need to remove chiai bonnet. Enter your knife around 5mm from the edge and push it forward like this. Then, bring the knife back at once. Simple knife action. Chiai bonnet removed easily. For sashimi, we need to peel off the skin. Enter your knife from the tail side and while keeping the blade flat to the chopping board, pull the skin with your hand. We don't just chuck away the skin, but we'll also enjoy it as sashimi. Put a pan on high heat, bring it to boil, and cook the skin quickly for about 30 seconds. It's more like we are parboiling it. Once it's ready, throw them into an ice bath and leave it until it cools down. Now let's deal with this fin part we call engawa. Enter the knife from the edge of the fin here and make a slit. Run your knife through a couple of times and while you're doing this, you should be able to feel the bone beneath the blade. Do the same for the other side as well. Meat around the fin is called engawa and is loved for its fattiness and sweet flavor. The term engawa means veranda in Japanese. This part of the fish is said to be named after engawa's narrow shape. As there is skin on the back, we need to peel them off as well. Skin side down, you can see the white part where there are no meat. Slice this off. Then, peel the skin off like we did for sashimi block earlier. Engawa is all ready to be eaten. Cut them into about 5 pieces when you want to enjoy it as sashimi. Time to slice flounder saku into sashimi. Place saku so that chiai bone side is towards you. Cut off the end, then slice it diagonally. Thickness we aim is about 1cm. Fold sashimi into half and place it radially on a big plate. We will show you how. Remember those skin we boiled earlier? Let's plate those too. Get rid of excess water, then chop them into 2 to 3 centimeters width. Nice and gelatinous texture is a great fun in your mouth. <laughs> if you have an access to menegi, also plate them together. Momiji Oroshi, grated daikon radish with cayenne pepper powder, is a must-try relish that goes perfectly with flounder sashimi. Grate about 1 6 of daikon and add in pepper powder gradually until you get a color like this. Make a small bowl and place it neatly together with spring onion. Cut sudachi citrus in half, poke out the seeds, then place it along other relishes. Doesn't it look gorgeous? It's a bouquet of flounder sashimi. Hirame no otsukuri no kansei desu! Akira-san will now show us how to make kobujime flounder sashimi cured with kombu seaweed. First, sprinkle salt thoroughly on both sides of flounder saku. Let it sit for about one hour. Rinse well under running water. Then, prepare a towel and wipe off all excess water.
Now prepare kombu seaweed with about the same size as flounder saku, then sandwich flounder with it. Pull out a cling film, then place flounder and wrap it tight. You can use anything but make sure to put a weight on top of flounder. Store it in refrigerator to allow flounder to rest for overnight. Good night! Ohayou gozaimasu! Let's see how our baby flounder's doing. Mmm, looking great. Meat has tightened, a good sign that umami is packed inside. What we will do now is to use this kobujime to make nigiri sushi. When slicing flounder into sushi neta size, make it thicker. This is about 1.5 cm. Always insert your knife diagonally to the fish and tilt your knife perpendicularly before blade touches the chopping board. This is kobagaeshi technique. It creates a nice edge called yane right here. From here onwards, Akira-san will show you a couple of ideas on flounder nigiri. We are using kobushime cured flounder in this nigiri. For flounder nigiri, it's best to use the hontegaishi technique. Paint a bit of nigiri soy sauce, then grate about this much of yuzu citrus. Use yakumi yose to sprinkle zest on top of sushi. One more recipe with yuzu is to sprinkle on the zest like we just did, then place a wee bit of shio kombu, salted kelp. This is my personal favorite combination. Harmony of umami layers are something I definitely want you to try. Recipe number two is a nigiri using engawa. When enjoying engawa as nigiri, slice open engawa filet like this. Once that's done, divide engawa into three, then stack two slices each. Use these stacked slices and make nigiri. To form a beautiful shape, lay slice of engawa half overlapping with each other. There we go. Pretty neat, huh? Paint nigiri soy sauce. And the citrus. Then place grated daikon radish on top. As engawa is fatty, by using citrus and daikon, it gives a refreshing touch and balances out the flavor. One other way to enjoy refreshing taste is to make a nigiri version of sashimi dish we made earlier. In order of nigiri, then citrus, place momiji oroshi, then add some green with baby spring onion. I hope you all enjoy the world of flounder. Thank you and arigato. See you in the next video.